to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said, You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse number 32. How do you know that you know the truth? Can a person even know? And how can you be sure that you know God's truth and that you're free from a life of sin? We're so glad you've joined us for our study today as we're going to think from the Word of God how a person can be sure, absolutely sure, he knows the truth. And so if you don't have your Bible, we want you to locate it as we're going to think about this wonderful subject today. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective play stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. As we mentioned, Jesus said you can absolutely know the truth. As we think about this powerful subject, how to know that I know the truth, friend, we're not asking today if a person can know the truth. The Scriptures affirm that one can know God's truth and go to heaven. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verse number 17, do not be ignorant, but understand the will of the Lord. You, you can know God's truth. You can understand God's will. Paul would say in Ephesians 3, verse 4, that when you read, you can understand my knowledge of the mystery of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3, verse number 4. And remember what the Lord said again. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And so it's not if we can know the truth. We can definitely know it, but how can we make sure that we know the truth? Now, our goal today is also not to determine if our parents or family or friend or somebody else knows the truth. This is a, a personal matter. How can I know I know the truth? And friend, it's personal because all of us will give an account of himself before God. Romans 14 verse 12 says, So then each of us shall give an account of himself before God. I know me. 
I know what I can and can't know. I know my heart and I can know if I know what God says is true and if I'm living that in my life. But then, friend, also realize this. Our goal today is not to debate or to counter what truth is. We accept from the Word of God what God says truth is. And my friend, that's the Word of God. The entirety of your Word is truth. Psalm 119, 160. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth, your Word is truth. And so we, we accept and believe that the Bible is all truth on religious matters, that I can know that for myself, that we can know the truth. And so our goal today is to discover and think about from the scripture, how? How is it that a person can be sure he knows the truth? And my friend, let's emphasize, being sure is a big deal. First John 5, 13, John said, these things we write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. We want people to know and to be absolutely sure that they're right with God. And so how do you achieve that? How do you know? Well, to be sure, there's some things you've kind of got to get out of the way. There are some, there's some hindrances and roadblocks to people knowing the truth that have to be removed before we can absolutely be sure. What are some of those hindrances? Friend, you'll never really know that you know the truth if all you do is believe and practice what other people tell you to believe and practice. You can't be sure. Matthew 15, Jesus said of the religious elite, elite of his day who a lot of people were putting their trust in, they're blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they're both going to fall into the ditch. Friend, if we put our trust in what others tell us or what some religious leader says or what somebody who we think knows a lot says, can you be sure you know God's truth if all you're doing is putting your trust in what they say? Do you remember Exodus chapter 23, verse number 2? Here's what Moses said in the long ago. Do not follow a multitude to do evil. We're, we're following the crowd in, in any idea is not what God wants us to do. Jesus said there's a broad gate and there's a wide way that leads to destruction. And listen to this. Many there are who go in by it. And so don't, don't just believe something because somebody told you that. Don't, don't believe something because somebody with a Bible or dressed in religious garb, or somebody that we may look up to religiously said that. To know you know the truth, you can't put your stock in, in all, all that you believe and what others tell you and think. And then, friend, consider this. Another hindrance to knowing that I know the truth is I cannot let human tradition and personal bias get in the way. Too many people do what they do because of tradition or bias or that's the way we like it or that's the way we've always done it. Do you remember what Jesus said to the Jews who were so caught up in that in his day and age? Matthew 15, verses 7 through 9. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their lips, they honor me with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. The Jews would go halfway around the world, Matthew 23, to make a proselyte, then they'd make him twice as much a son of hell as themselves. Just because tradition says that's the way people have done it, or just because that's the way maybe we've always done that, or that's the way we like it, friend, that, that, that's not going to be what's pleasing to God. And so don't let following a multitude or some other person hinder you. Don't let human tradition and personal bias hinder you. Friend, if you're going to know the truth, you've got to realize that putting your faith in the uninspired books of men, that'll hinder you from knowing the truth. What we need to be asking is, is there any word from the Lord? 
Jeremiah 37, verse 17. We need to ask the question of Romans 4, verse 3. What does the Scripture say? Not what has the latest novel writer or latest religious writer in the top 100. No, that's not what we need to ask. The uninspired books of men can't save your soul. They can't get you to heaven. They are not guaranteed to be right, and you can't be sure you know the truth if you're following those books. Realize this, the Bible, this book, the Word of God, is the only inspired roadmap to heaven. Romans 1.16, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why not, Paul? For it's the power of God unto salvation. James 1.21 says, We're to receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save our souls. Men and women are born again by the word of God which lives and abides forever. 1 Peter 1, verse number 23. And so Jesus' truth, John 8, verse 32, John 17.17, 17, found in the words of the Bible, His way, being the only way, John 14, 6, we've got to realize the Bible is our only trustworthy roadmap that when you follow it, you can be absolutely sure the end result is going to be a place called heaven. Books of men, they just can't save your soul. There's a way that seems right to a man. The end thereof is the way of death. Jesus said in John 12, 48, He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. N not in the books of men, but in the book of God. We have everything we need for life and for godliness. And so if we look to church tradition, creed books, confessions of faith, what's popular with men or the latest religious novels, and, and we put our trust in that. Friend, you're putting your trust in something that is not inspired of God, that can be fallible, and you can't know that you're right with God if you put your trust in the books of men. Now, there's another thing that can hinder us from knowing the truth. And I think it's a big one, as you see throughout the Bible. Throughout Scripture, a lot of people, even some who knew the truth, were hindered from continuing to know and do that truth by an attachment to this world and the allurement that Satan throws out in front of us. See, my friend, the world and all that's in it, lust the eyes, lust the flesh, the pride of life, it's passing away. John said, do not love the world or the things that are in the world. Why? Because it's all passing away. There's a passing pleasure to sin. There's no doubt about it. If sin wasn't at least in some way enjoyable, it'd never be a temptation, right? Hebrews 11 verse 25. But my friend, I've got to realize worldliness and godliness cannot go hand in hand. Do you not know Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world has made himself God's enemy. And so as you think about this idea, I want you to think about just a couple of people with me who knew the truth, who were chosen by God, who were walking down a path for godliness, and they let the world get them off track. Think about Solomon. Solomon was given wisdom from God like you can't even begin to imagine. He knew God, knew God's truth. He was walking and living the right way. But then the next thing you know, here's Solomon up on the hilltop with his many wives building altars to and worshiping false gods. How'd that happen? The world, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life pulled him away. Now, as you think about other people like that. You can see Judas. Judas was chosen by Jesus. He chose him because he had talent, no doubt, and had ability. But Judas eventually sold the Lord out for 30 pieces of silver. Don't let the love of the world and things like that distract you and get you off track from knowing the truth.
Well, since we talked about some hindrances, now let's talk about some helps. What are some things that if I do these, if I put these in place, will help me to know the truth? Number one, if you want to know the truth and really know and be sure you know the truth, you've got to have a good and honest heart. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. Of those four soils, the one that received the seed, sprung up, bore fruit to God, was the one that was good soul, that had a good and honest heart. Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 8. And so we need a heart like Saul of Tarsus. When Saul is confronted with the light, Jesus Christ, Saul didn't buck up. He didn't say, no, I think I'll keep doing it my way. Saul said, and here's a good heart. Lord, what would you have me to do? The, the attitude of Jesus' mother in John 2 verse 5 expresses a good heart. Whatever he says to you, she said to the servants, do it. Uh, the attitude of, of Samuel, 1 Samuel 3 verse 9, speak, Lord. Your servant hears the attitude of Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. Here am I, send me. Friend, when we talk about a good heart, it's one who is free from the, the, the pride and the wanting to be big himself and have it all, but just simply submits himself to Almighty God. Then, my friend, a big help to knowing you know the truth outside of having a good and honest heart that just wants to please God. You've got to be ready to test and to prove everything you hear. Being ready is a big part of God's command, right? Be ready always. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. Be ready to do what? I've got to prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 21. Search God says this, search in the book of the law and see. God never gets mad. God never gets upset. It doesn't make God angry when we hear something. Even if somebody says this is from God, that we check it in God's word to make sure that's right. God says, come, let us reason together. God wants us to use our, our thinking and reasoning ability to decipher truth from error and to test the spirits, to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. 1 John 4, verse 1. Now, how do you do all that? Well, again, there's got to be a source, and that source is the Word of God. Let me give you the prime example of people who were ready to test and to prove and to be sure they knew the truth. Acts 17, verse 11. Paul comes to the area of Berea, and the Bible says, Thee were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. Can you imagine in your mind's eye how that scene might have went? Paul comes up to the home in Thessalonica or Berea, knocks on the door. They open the door. They recognize Paul, maybe, from some of his past ventures. And, and Paul says, I'd like to tell you about Jesus and how he's the Son of God, the Messiah. what they do next? Shut the door in his face and say, we don't want any of that? No, they said, Paul, come on in. They sat down. Paul sat down. He began to give a spiel about the gospel, tell about Jesus, show that from the prophets, and they're listening carefully because souls are at stake. What'd they do next? Did they immediately accept what Paul said without even checking it? They, no. They searched the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. What's that mean? They said, Paul, we're glad you come by. You've said a lot of interesting things today. We've taken notes where we're, we, be, we believe some of what you said, but we're going to check it to make sure it's true to God's word. Friend, listen carefully to me. There's a lot of people who are told a lot of various things religiously. There's a lot of people who get up and say a lot of things. And then when you go to the Bible, you can't really support those ideas. To know you know the truth, you've got to be responsible for checking what you hear 
by the Word of God. And again, let me give you some examples. Somebody today says, you know, today, since Jesus isn't here, the Pope is the vicar of Christ. He's the spokesman of God on earth for all of God's people today. Really? Where's that at in the Bible? My Bible still says, call no man father. Matthew 23, verse 9. The Word of God still says, God speaks today through His Son. Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2. Nowhere in the Bible does it say I'm to listen to the Pope. Someone says, well, you know, things are different today than they were in the first century, and today it's acceptable for women to get up and preach. Please understand me well. I'm thankful to ev for every faithful woman who lives up to the Christian role God has divined for her in the Bible. They're super important. No doubt their importance cannot be undervalued. But the Bible still says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to be an authority over a man. 1 Corinthians 14, 34, 1 Timothy 2, verses 11 and 12. A lot of people will say things like, baptism, you know, that's a good thing to do after you're saved, but that is not essential to salvation. Really? What did Jesus say? Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 3, verse 5. The Lord said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. And so I've got to be ready. We've got to be ready to test and to prove everything by the word of God. Friend, there's also another help. I've got to be committed. If I'm going to know the truth and, and make sure that I'm right with God, I have got to be committed to studying the scriptures for myself. Again, the Bible says when you read, you can understand. The Bible says, don't be ignorant of the will of, the God, of God. The scripture says you can know the truth and the truth will make you free. How do you do all that? Study to show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer. Proverbs 15 verse 26 through 28. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And so like in Acts 17, 11, we need to listen carefully, listen intently. And then once we've listened carefully, we need to check it by the word of God. Make sure that God's word is right. Let God be true in every man a liar. And so study the Bible for yourself. Make sure that you know God's word, that you know God's will, and that you're trying to live by that. And then one final thing. And it's really not about knowing, it's more about doing. How can I be sure I'm right with God? Friend, once I've studied the scripture, I've got to have the faith to do what it says. It's not enough to know all the facts. You can know all the facts of the Bible. You can know everything from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 and know all the truths, but still not be right with God. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, it's not everybody that looks up into heaven and says, Lord, Lord, that's going there. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. You see, Jesus is the author of eternal salvation to all those who obey him. And so once I discover from the word of God, what's truth, what's right, how I need to live, what I need to do to be saved, how I need to worship God. I've got to have the faith to follow through with that and do what God wants me to do. Jesus asked a very compelling question in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus said to the Jewish elite, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say. So my friend, we ask you today, have you obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ? It, it must be obeyed. For Paul said in Romans 6, 17, God be thanked that though you were the slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of teaching, teaching to which you are delivered. Have you obeyed the teaching, the doctrine, the gospel of Jesus Christ? You say, well, what does that mean? Have you heard the message? You see, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing 
and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. Having heard that message, checked it, looked in your Bible for yourself, seen it with your own eyes, understood that to be true. Have you believed in it? John 8, verse 24, the Lord said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. As Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch are traveling down the road, in the distance, he sees the opportunity. Here's water, what hinders me? If you believe with all your heart, you may. Acts chapter 8, verse 31 following. And once you've believed that, are you willing to repent? Peter preached in Acts 3, 19. Repent and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that seasons of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is a 180 degree turn, turning from a life of sin to Almighty God in His way. Have you made the good confession? Just like the Ethiopian eunuch, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He said, I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Acts 8, 36 and 37, Matthew 10, 32 and 33. And then my friend, to be saved, have you done what the Bible says? Acts 22, verse 16. Saul of Tarsus was told by the Lord, you go into the city. It'll be told you what you must do. What was that essential thing Paul had to do? Ananias came to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Acts 22, 16. And remember, Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. And so my friend, we ask you today, are you sure you know the truth? You've done what the truth says. Are you sure that you're right with God today? If not, you'd like to learn more about that, let us know. And we hope you'll join us next time as we study more from the gospel of Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand, downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.